She's a tawny owl and she's about 14 years old. When she was young, she fell out the nest and unfortunately she was picked up by some humans and taken home as a pet. Had they have left her where she was, she would have managed to get back to the nest and she would have been a wild owl. Some wild animals are actually left by their mother, uh, such as a deer, to, when they go out foraging. Mm. And so they do need to be observed before we are interfere with them, basically. Yeah. Owls generally have got this enormous facial disc here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> this is why we don't, don't, don't get touch too them. familiar, yeah. yes. That's She's that's very gentle, can't though, isn't she? Yeah, so this facial disc amplifies the sound that goes into the owl's ears. The owl's ears take up about a third of its brain case so and they are located behind the eye which is rather fascinating the hawk and owl trust are really a conservation body uh, conserving birds of prey in their natural habitat so we're looking to, to, to help farmers to, to help them Ooh. <laughs> action there <laughs> <laughs> preserve their habitat and tell them a little bit about the, you know, how to look after their habitats and how to, to put up our boxes and things like that. It was founded back in 1969 um, and one of the founders was Jemima Perry Jones's father who was uh, Phil Glazier. So the Hawk and Owl Trust does have its roots actually in Falkenberg. <laughs> Habitat loss is a, a, a huge thing because if the owls haven't got enough prey, e.g. the field bowl that provide owls, then basically they're going to really struggle. Um, but we can help with that, we can help give advice to people um, and help improve their land and their the rough grassland is what we want really. We've got a, a project up at the moment where we're actually testing a special sensor um, that's supposed to be trying to deter the owls from going into cars. That's one of the things that barn owls do get hit by cars, uh, by main, main roads, so that's, a, that's quite a big thing. So we're still in the stage of seeing that, if that's successful or not. And you recently just um, started a Dorset and South Somerset branch, is that right? That's right, yes. We meet every third Thursday at uh, the Sparkford Inn, hoping to get an owl box workshop here at Montacute um, in a month or two's time with Chris Sparring, um, which will be brilliant. Maria, what have you got in the centre at this particular moment? Uh, quite a wide variety of things, lots of hedgehogs as usual. We've recently been called out to a very sad case where eight swans were shot on sunset levels. Um, sadly, the majority of them were dead when they came in. We, we have one survivor we're keeping our fingers crossed for. And of course, we're now on the very edge of booming baby season and we already have um, an otter cub and some very young badger cubs in. We are a registered charity um, and as such we, you know, we're very grateful to places like the National Trust for allowing us to come in and collect much needed funds for our charities. Publicise the work we do, um, advertise our open weekends and also so people know where they can bring any injured or orphaned wildlife. <laughs> 